everyone and welcome back to the Aesthetic Treatment Rooms. My name's Dr. Helen and this is Rachel. Hi. And we co-own the Aesthetic Treatment Rooms as well as the Aesthetic Training Rooms. Branching out and keeping the same initials, it's confusing for everyone. <laughs> um, so we are really privileged that we are working in partnership with Shop Beautiful and MedFX. Um, we provide training on microneedling, mesotherapy and via repeal and we use um, obviously the products that MedFX and Shop Beautiful have. Uh, we find that these products are, we know it's they're, they're great companies so we know they're reputable, we know that the products are sourced directly from the manufacturers, uh, and we know that they're, they're safe for our, yeah. our customers and like we love the company so it works really well for us. Um, as I say we found that we uh, we did a lot of training, as I'm sure a lot of you have. We wanted um, accessory courses, not just the basic botulinum toxin and dermal fillers, which is what we started out with. I think everybody everybody think does, don't does. they? Yeah, um, so we really do the accessory courses, um, the stuff that is going to help you bring your patients back in between those appointments as well. So today we're going to talk a bit more about biorepeal. And after our webinar that we did in October, and we've done a short video, sort of an introduction to as well, we just wanted to go over a few more points, um, questions that had commonly come up in the forums and following the webinar and things to explain a little bit more and to try and get to the bottom of these sort of frequently asked questions that people have, just to try and help everyone um, and get through that. So I hope it's helpful. Um, our introduction to biorepeal should be out as well so if you want a little bit of a recap go through that as well so what is biorepeal let's go over that bit quickly um, biorepeal is a trichloroacetic acid peel it is a combination peel which means that it actually has quite a few different acids in there um, it's biphasic so it's got two different phases in it but the way that it works is that it's got um, a keralytic action which actually helps to exfoliate and give a peel-like effect. So what we're trying to do with that, the trichloroacetic acid helps to regenerate and revitalise sort of the skin underneath. And then we get the peel in action on the top as well, which actually helps to slough off those dead skin cells, which actually help to reveal that fresher, plump, young skin that we soft, all soft and smooth. We all dream about. <laughs> so it's got, as I said, multiple different ingredients in it. We've got the trichloroacetic acid, which is really good for rejuvenation and regeneration. We have got lactobionic acid. We have got citric acid. We have got tartaric acid. And those acids are really good for smoothing skin tone, making skin look brighter. Um, and then we've got salicylic acid, which is always a hero product for anyone who is an acne sufferer. So it really helps just to decongest the skin, um, making sure that those, you know, the blackheads go, um, people's skin has a chance to recover from any excess sebum that's produced as well. We have got amino acids in there, which help to stop the skin getting too irritated. And we've got our um, vitamin C and vitamin B2 as well, which actually really helps to stop any sort of oxidative action. We've got, it's an, there are antioxidants. It's biphasic. So we've got the a top layer, which is blue, the bottom layer, which is yellow, which is why when you shake them together, shake it to wake it, you get a nice green emulsion because um, the two parts actually mix together. So in the top layer, you've got your squalene and you've got your isopropyl myristate, which actually help to protect the um, top layer of your skin. So it helps to stop transepidermal water loss. It helps to keep that lipid barrier intact. It also helps to stop the um, actives underneath from getting oxidized. So that's really what it's there for. Um, the rest of it contains everything else. And that's going to help again with our skin turnover. It's going to help the skin to look better. It helps that top layer of skin to slough off. We've got the antioxidative action of it. It's um, it's got a lot of benefits, and it's got a lot of things that are kind of going in there. But we also have this really magical ingredient called I'm going to call it GABA. GABA, GABA, GABA amino butyric acid. <laughs> GABA, GABA. Um, 
and it gives this amazing flash lifting effect. So as soon as you take that peel off, your patients look really fresh. They look, you know, their skin looks tighter, it looks lifted, it feels nice and velvety, and patients love that, they really do, because they're getting that instant result that they, we all want. None of us want to wait for anything these days. So you get the instant result, and then they go away, and after a couple of days, they may peel a little bit as well. So like I say, we've got those two phases which work really well. We've got that instant effect from it. And then we've got the, the chemical peeling, the actual peel effect, which may or may not happen. So you do have to counsel your patients with that, that it may or just may not be uh, possible for them to go. It just depends on how their skin is. It depends a lot on sort of circumstantial things, whether they're hydrated, how damaged their skin is. So some people feel like if they don't peel with a peel, it hasn't worked which isn't the case you still get all the benefits of it as well so let's go into those questions so today it is Rachel's turn to be in the hot seat and let's see how much she knows yeah so I'm gonna get you a little list of all your questions here so Rachel we have used the products by Rehydra by Relift and the Forever Prep do we have to use these with by Repeal you don't have to use them with BioRepeal, however they have been developed by the same company. So CMED in Italy have produced these products to go alongside the BioRepeal. So for us, it makes sense to use the product that's being developed to go with it. So you're going to need to use something to degrease the skin. So use the product that, that's been developed for that. Um, you know if you're going to use that product it's going to work well to complement the bio repeal but you're also not going to have any any issues with um contraindications of like mixtures of ingredients things have been de reacted yeah, together as well yeah i mean the forever prep is brilliant for other things as well though isn't I it and as a time. standalone treatment i love it it's really good yeah so why would you not yeah so it's got obviously it's got the light gel cleanser it's got the activator spray but it's also got the charcoal mask as well which has got um salicylic acid in it so again a brilliant and a brilliant ingredient to help with um outbreaks so the bio rehydra and the bio relift again they have been developed to go alongside as aftercare so i always use that i, I don't think i would even consider using anything else other than that it works so well and yeah. it, it, it does enhance results it does enhance the results but it's also got the same sort of ingredients in as the bio repeal so we've got the bio rehydra which is the fast absorbing gel that's got sort of 15 active ingredients in it so it's got all of the vitamins minerals but it's also got the gaba <laughs> we love the gaba we don't like the gaba. It. We do the gaba <laughs> i'm not even going to attempt to say the 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 full pronunciation uh, gaba i mean a butyric acid that one Woo aka <laughs> gaba <laughs> But we've also got the the cream as well. So we've got the Bio Relift, which is the like like I said, fast absorbing cream. This is really good. It's got the same ingredients in as the as the Bio Rehydra. However, it's also got colloidal um, platinum in it, so mm -hmm. it's antibacterial. So that is excellent for acne prone skin. So these can be used obviously straight after the treat after the treatment. But we're at, we always recommend them for home care as well, just to replace normal moisturiser. Um, and it, it obviously helps prolong the, the results of the treatment. Not only that, I think if you're reselling as home care, because you can get them in a little retail size as well as um, in clinic size, yeah. as well as your back bar, um, that it actually, you get a little bit of extra profit then for you as well. So it's upselling in the interest of the patients, but also it enhances your profit margin. So why would you not? Yeah, so, so benefits all around. Um, so is bio repeal a medium depth peel or a deep peel? So bio repeal is a medium depth peel with the FND. That's a thirty five percent TCA peel. However, the body you would class as like a deeper peel because it's fifty percent. And can this be used by everybody? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, obviously, other than people who are allergic to the ingredients um so you wouldn't use it on your usual people like pregnant breastfeeding um you wouldn't use it on people who are allergic to aspirin um uncontrolled diabetes um psoriasis eczema like active cold sores so it's a usual sort of 
contraindications for for the treatments. Um, what about for the practitioners using it? Can the practitioners use both concentrations? No. Um, so you would need to speak to your insurance company. Um, our insurance company has informed us that to use the TCA peel, you can do it if you're beauty qualified and qualified in chemical peels up to the 35%. However, for the body, for the 50% TCA, because that's a deep appeal, you need to be medically qualified. So always check with your insurance company to make sure that they're happy for you to be using the, the products that you're using. Your guys' insurance companies are gonna be here and ask us that oh, no. <laughs> time. Um, does the whole vial need to be used in once, one sitting and then discarded if there's any left over, or can you use it on somebody else? So you can use it on somebody else as long as you've used a sterile needle to withdraw the solution. So as long as you've opened the solution, used a sterile needle, draw that up, draw your two mils up, you will have four mils left. So you can keep that for up to six weeks at room temperature. Don't put it in the fridge. It's not. It's not a um, like a cold chain product. Well, going on to the next questions, where where should I store ah. bio repeal? Eh? <laughs> between 5 and 25 degrees uh -huh. and obviously like I say don't put it in the fridge because it doesn't live there so we're looking at a, a cool cupboard really aren't we yeah. so something out of the fridge but especially you do have to be careful in the summer because oh, yeah. it can get quite warm so making sure that it's out obviously nowhere in direct sunlight um, put away and if when it gets warm put a thermometer in your cupboard because yeah. I mean we did when it got warm in the summer didn't we mm -hmm. and it was the rooms were getting up to 28 degrees yeah. so, so we you had know. to take everything out didn't we we put yeah. everything in the in the passage and we had to bring the air conditioning unit <laughs> to cool all of our products but so. otherwise if they go over that then obviously they can oxidize or they don't become as active and they're not going to work and again patient safety is it better to discard them if they've gone above those limits so just it's just a case of thinking ahead. Um, so next question, can dermaplaning be carried out on the same appointment? Yes, it can, um, as long as you are qualified in dermaplaning and you have checked with your insurance company <laughs> um, to mix any, any procedures together. So as we've said in one of our other videos, if you're gonna be using two different procedures, just make sure your insurance company will cover you to do that. But if you are going to do it, make sure you do dermaplaning before you do the peel. Uh, how long should patients wait for before waxing? And really, I suppose that's how long should they wait to have the bio repeal after waxing, or how long should they wait after the bio repeal to have the waxing? So how long either side? Thirty six hours needs to be in between any sort of waxing and peel treatment. Before and after? Yes, minimum. And can you do skin boosters on the same day? Again, check with your insurance company. Hi, yeah. hi, insurance companies. It's our fault. <laughs> um, but again, yeah, you need to make sure that you're um, insured to do both, both of the um, treatments at the same time, rather than um, doing them as two separate procedures. But if you are going to be doing them, do it after the peel. How long should you wait before you get semi-permanent makeup? Oh, that's a good question. So we normally say for semi-permanent makeup, you want to leave a minimum of a month in between having your semi-permanent makeup and having the peel. However, we we'll normally recommend that you put Vaseline or a barrier barrier over your, um, like any tattooing, any semi-permanent makeup, um, because you don't want to be applying an acid straight over any, any sort of tattoo because it will fade it. How do you work out pricing for the body peel? because there's different areas. So doing pricing, what we always do is we see patients for a consultation first, where we'll go through all of our paperwork, and that is the point where they're gonna show you the area. Now, we've had cases where somebody said, oh, it's just a little bit on, on my shoulder, and then when we've seen them, it's actually been the full arm. Yeah. So in those cases, what you want to do is see the area that needs to be treated before you give a price. So you want to be pricing per mil. Now, what we say is 10 square centimetres is roughly a, a mil of peel. Yeah. So you want to be pricing accordingly and make sure that you're, that you're covering your costs. So for body per mil, we charge £40. Um, so that's just like a rough guide as to what, as to what you can 
can be charged it, on. It's unlikely on the body it's going to be a small area, yeah. really, isn't it? Yeah. So just as a guide for what you're having. Um, so is hyperpigmentation an indication <laughs> or a contraindication? So this is a popular question. So just to make things even more confusing, hyperpigmentation is a contraindication, an indication, a risk, and a side effect. <laughs> so, so yeah, you you need to be aware of what's happening. Firstly, so again, when you're having your consultation, take a thorough medical history. If there's anything that you're not sure of, you need to refer back to your trainer or refer back to your trainer. And um, they'll be able to give you more advice on whether it's something that can be treated or can't be treated. Um, so medical history wise, if there is hyperpigmentation caused by any sort of um, medical condition for example Addison's disease mm -hmm. that's something that can cause widespread pigmentation it's it's not going to be it's not going to be solved with a peel if somebody has um, areas where they've got hypopigmentation um, again that's not going to be treated um, so just make sure you know what what the pigment is um, and what it's caused from Things like um, post-pregnancy melasma, that can be treated. Um, because the cause is gone. Because the cause is gone. The cause is gone. So the, the pigmentation that's left can then be, yeah, be, be treated. Because be, mm -hmm. be it's not going to continually be regenerating from the underlying cause. Mm -hmm. And try and work out what the cause was. So, for example, sunspots. If somebody's going on a sunbed regular and then they're stopping for a bit, then yes, you are going to help with the pigmentation, but if they go start going back on the sunbeds, it's going to come straight back. So make them aware, just make sure you're educating your patients as to, to what they need to be doing. So if it is caused by exposure to the sun, um, advise SPF 50 for the face, which we normally recommend anyway. Oh, we, people. we bully our patients from an SPF <laughs> you on all will the time. Use the SPF. Um, because it's it's so important to protect your skin. You know, all the people who are doing it, we know how important it is to have that sun protection, but not only from the sun. Like, I mean, it's it's November, it's raining, it's horrible. There's no sunshine in the sky, but blue light from your computers, yeah. from your phone screens as well, it helps to protect against that. Yeah. So it is important. And make sure that you're educating very well and giving very clear and concise post-op instructions. So, for example, if you do a peel on somebody and then they go straight on a sunbed, that is then going to cause pigment issues. So, again, like I said, it is an indication, a contraindication and a risk and side effect. So, just good, good education to the patient, follow the post-op instructions, make sure that you've took a clear, concise medical history and work out what the pigmentation is caused by. And if that has gone, then you can treat it. Last question, Rachel. How do people provide go about providing this peel and getting qualified or um, have uh, make sure that they can provide this safely to their patients? So to provide any sort of treatment, you need to be gaining uh, chemical peel qualification. You can't just do an online webinar, you can't just do an online training course, you have to do face-to-face -face training for most insurance companies. And I mean, to be fair, you're better off having that experience and having the face-to-face -face training so that you can ask questions. You need to make sure that you're getting clear, concise information to make sure that you know what you're doing. Um, some people are saying that they haven't had any information with regards to certain parts of chemical peels um, for so they don't know whether they should be doing things so if that is the case you might want to think about taking another chemical peel training course um, Shop Beautiful do also provide workshops don't they? Yes they provide yeah. workshops so if you buy a bio repeal pack they normally you can get like the the workshop can't, can't Com like co complimentary yeah. like so mm -hmm. they do a bundle I think where you can start that off so you might see the lovely Gillian who yes. you might have seen out of our videos she's who is lovely. amazing and she knows so much about it and she can help you gain your confidence and um, show you exactly what what you need to be doing and go through that with you as yeah. well. 
So I think that's it. But no, if you do seems... need an accredited bio repeal training course, we also do provide that at the aesthetic training rooms. Yes. So to do the course, just to make you aware as well, to do a chemical peel course, you need to be either medically qualified or to have a level three in beauty. And then you are okay to do a, do a course and get insured and get, get on your way to do the peels. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks again, everyone. Thanks for spending some time with us. We hope this has answered some of your questions and uh, we hope to see you all again soon. Bye. Bye.